<laughs> All right, welcome back to the Canadian Gun Vault. Uh, Again, we have Black Powder Dave joining us and the French Mass 36 bolt action rifle. For those of you that aren't familiar, uh, fantastic piece. Really uh, a wonderful, uh, you know, article uh, of, of firearm engineering. Uh, just to look at it, it's very slim. Uh, it's very well built. Uh, just the feel of it is fantastic. Uh, Dave, what can you tell us about this gun? Uh, it's a design for the French Army, World War II design of 1936, as you can tell by the name predecessor to the semi-automatic Mass 49, which the French used in Vietnam without success apparently, as did the Americans unfortunately, who took over from the French in that debacle. <laughs> um, these guns did not see a lot of use in World War II, obviously, because the French capitulated so early in the war. Drops so, once. <laughs> yeah, they only it's dropped them once. Uh, this one actually, though, was pre-war. This is uh, or after the war. This is a 1957 production, so they made them for quite a while. Has a few unusual features. Uh, and you know what? And before we even get started, I'm going to pull this bolt back and uh, just clear the uh, clear the firearm and make sure that it's empty. And once we prove it's safe, we can uh, safely spin it around. Is there anything yeah. that? Uh, uh, you may notice the bent bolt design that yeah. was done for reason to clear your face while you were shooting it because the bolt came so close to you. Uh, and it locks at the rear of the receiver, which is not considered the strongest, but it's the way they did it. Shoots fine, fun to shoot, and a really different firearm that you don't see too often. Well, you know what, I, I can't say that I've seen this one turn up on the exchange too often. I have had the opportunity to fire this Black Powder. Dave was uh, kind enough to let me pull the trigger a few times, and a heavy trigger uh, it is. It, uh, it certainly is uh, very slim and very well built feeling. But uh, heavy. But, but, but heavy. It, it definitely uh, makes you feel like you're holding on to something that would be difficult to hump around for any length of time with. If I was forced to carry this, uh, it's no wonder that they threw them away so fast. I'd probably <laughs> ditch you pretty quick too. But uh, again, uh, just echoing uh, Dave's sentiments, this curved bolt, it, it's, it's an odd shape and an odd looking bolt, but when you cycle this, uh, when you cycle this firearm, if you take a look, this bolt comes dangerously close to your nose and the, uh, the actual charging handle, uh, if it wasn't canted forward, you would be literally punching yourself yeah. in the face, I think, every time you cycle the action, which would probably not be a, an activity you would get along, uh, get along with doing oh, all together be, too you often. Shoot left -handed, like left handed like Dave. Left-handed yeah. like Dave, yeah. So, I mean, and, and I can't help but notice up in the front here, we've got this, uh, this item. This is really interesting. Yeah, this is pretty cool. This is the uh, grenade launcher site, and it's all graduated inside. Uh, they would come with a rubber butt plate which was used to put the gun on the ground to fire grenades and that would be to cushion it so it wouldn't bust the stock. Uh, you know, I, I, I haven't had the opportunity, but I have heard that uh, shooting uh, grenades out of rifles like this is uh, quite an interesting affair and there is a substantial amount of recoil. Looking at this, uh, this site, I'm going to turn, uh, turn the rifle around here for a second. If you can uh, take a look, the, uh, the graduated sight system, these are really clear markings. They're yep. really interesting to look at uh, through this, uh, this interesting peep sight, which is actually on a uh, leaf-like spring, which is completely different than what I'm used to seeing on, uh, on the rear sight assemblies of rifles. It's, it's, it's not a ramp, it's, it's, a, it's literally a leaf spring, a leaf spring that coils upwards. It, it really is an interesting piece and uh, something that you don't see every day. Uh, what kind of investment would you be looking at in terms of spending uh, money? This one cost me about 350 which I thought was a very reasonable price. Uh, the guy who originally owned it, fired 100 rounds out of it, said you couldn't find ammo, put it up for sale. I have no problem finding ammo and I reload ammo for it, so not an issue. Well, and, and looking, it's more than available by PPU does manufacture it. And, and I'm looking here at the uh, 7.5 yeah. millimeter by 54 ball ammunition, a uh, very powerful cartridge, and, and very close to the Swiss K31 in terms of its dimensions, yeah, but, three but, but but not interchangeable. Uh, I understand that uh, these cartridges, if placed in the uh, wrong gun, will probably cause a catastrophic detonation, yeah. and that's something you want to avoid in an investment. Another interesting feature of this gun was the removable bayonet, which would slide back into the same hole it came out of, did not attach to the barrel, which was a excellent idea. The French do have some good ideas. <laughs> some of them are a little different, but they have, be in firearms, they've done a lot of really neat stuff. Well, you know what, historically, I'm sure this is a very significant piece. I, I'm really enjoying uh, just, just holding it. I mean, you can really tell that it's from a, a different period in time. And, uh, and we're so glad to have uh, had an opportunity to handle it and shoot it. Thank you again, Black Powder Dave, for coming Not a problem. Thank right. you very much always, for having me. Always, always a pleasure.